The police are reporting that six females have been taken into custody in connection with the savage beating of a 14-year-old girl in Clarendon. The ages of the female suspects range from 15 to 52. The injured child has since been released from hospital, but she now suffers from memory loss and walks with a limp. It is understood that the teenager was not the intended target of last month's attack, but rather her mother. The adult woman is reportedly in a love triangle involving herself, her boyfriend, and another woman. When the teen's mother was not located, her daughter was reportedly attacked by a group of females after the child was cornered in a community in Clarendon. Head of the parish's police, Superintendent Carlos Russell, in a radio interview on Wednesday, said the suspects appear to have no remorse for their actions. He said the police are preparing to lay charges against the women. The video of the incident that has been circulating on social media shows the group seemingly cornering and then beating the teen to an unconscious state. Several of the females, including a woman who appeared to be in her 50s, were also seen kicking the child while she was helpless on the ground. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency is also probing the incident. Roger Clark High School in St. Elizabeth is mourning the sudden death of information technology teacher Demani Campbell. On Tuesday, the 28-year-old educator, who is from the parish, died after suffering a seizure. His death came sharply on the heels of another teacher, 40-year-old Alexis Thompson, from Lacovia High School in the parish, who died suddenly. A late-night operation in Taws Meadows, Spanish Town in St. Catherine, on Thursday, December 28, that saw the police successfully foiling a kidnapping, resulting in the rescue of the victims, the arrest of two persons, the seizure of a firearm, and the fatal shooting of a suspect. The victim of the kidnapping has decided to come forward and share his story as he lamented the frightening encounter with thugs from Spanish town and also shower the police with praises. Well, I'm saving my life, man. Right now, I'm going to tell you about a big man. Every time I remember that, I know I feel like it's just only two of them who come in like, and mark her and kiss them shoes every day. Because two of them and them see me because my sister is dead. Yo, you see, every time I remember how much I leave, I get. I can't tell the police woman, no, but just uh, every time all of me and I come, I say, I'm going to leave, I get to you know. An abducted victim speaking out after a near-death ordeal. He says he was beaten by more than a dozen men in Taz Meadows, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. But that's not where the story started. He was out running errands all day with his sister-in-law. He hadn't eaten and had a headache. I tell her, I said, I don't feel good for a man. It's a true when I eat nothing on the road. She said, she said she I'll buy a pill and we'll go to KFC. We'll buy something. So she said, I'll go to the pharmacy. So we're going to the pharmacy now. I look the pill. She go first. Then me go after. Come and say, I go look at die. Die out the ear. When me stands now, a woman go. Me say to the security, say, how much did die? You know, where the die is? And she say, ask the lady. I'm going to ask the lady. And the lady said, thousand dollars. He says the die was too expensive, so he decided to leave it. After leaving the pharmacy, he says he was approached by the three security guards who accused him of stealing something. Hold on, Pammy, search me. Me not have nothing. Send so down and search me. They want to send him a run by the camera. Go see. So I say, run by the camera, because I know I'm not going to so have to run. He says they took him back inside to a storeroom, and that's when things took a turn. I said, I'm sorry, beat me out of one last, one last. Beat me out of last, beat me out of you, lick me from my hand with the one big pipe. An iron pipe, lick me, lick me, lick me, and oh, then... I feel when I get the lick my hand. No, because I black them with my hand. I black them, I can see my hand swell up. I can see my hand swell up. I black them, I black them off my face, because my face is not like off, you know. So the time when you, the youth, they were silent, they didn't know I started thump me up in my face, thump me up my head, thump me up behind my ears. Instead of calling the police, he says the guards called thugs. Several men came and forced him into a car. Me and them out there, but why? 
Because I put me in a car, I said, I'm not nah, going in a car, I'm not nah, going in a car. So the one blown reach out on the tattoo on him chest. Shoot me in a car, the security go up on one side, and the next top man go up on one side. You see it? And the brown new drive. When I drive, then I'm going to the community now. The brown new car, feel friend them. Which community? You know which community it was? Ty Spain. His sister-in-law observed from a distance. But when we look and say, oh, them are dry, me take away myself, because I'm here, Spanish town and nice. So when me, yes, and me end up calls alert, you know. While she was seeking help from the police, more than a dozen other men in Tor's Meadows took turns beating him. They bring me to look at the bridge, you know. They tell me, sit down on the ground. They say, sit down on the ground, and they say, be a pallet board and start lick me. What is, what am I licking with? Pallet board. Be a pallet board. Be a pallet board, then the youth. The youth, you know, say, um, that innocent, him come with the light and say so. And he knew my face. And so, you know, my face with it. Here's the scar on his forehead from the lighter bird. His mouth and other parts of his head were swollen. We've chosen not to show them to protect his identity. The man he's referring to who had the lighter is 35-year-old Donald Brown, the bar owner who would die in a reported shootout later that night with police. Residents had protested the shooting. The youth who lit me on my face with the lighter now, in say, go for a picker, go for a picker and go for a shovel. He says they questioned him whether he had anyone who would be willing to pay $100,000 to save him. He contacted a relative. But one of the persons they were speaking with on the phone was a policeman. They might talk to my fiance and I know so the police they find the phone. So me while well, they might drive and think of my fiance and I talk to the person in the car. So the person know exactly who they might go to. They instructed the person to drop off the money at the bar owned by no deceased Donald Brown. The intention, however, was never to release him. I said, go in at the bar, man, go in at the bar, man. And the Brown just said, yo, any time you give me money, just shoot him and kill him and throw him off in the water. You see me? So they had all said, they said, they said their intention was to steal. kill me. See me, call it the money and still kill me. One of the abductors realized the men who came were police and he yelled out with an expletive, Police! So I saw me find out police and shoot off the out in the water where I've gone behind me. I run off because they've never really hold on for me. Whoa. And when you run off, what happened after that? I run off, they um, say, boom, boom, and both are shot off for the police, them down there, because the police them are shining light up there. He said he ran as fast as he could toward the police while shots were blazing around him. Two persons, including a 17-year-old, were captured while the bar owner who he says fired at the police was killed. His eyes welled with tears as he recalled the rescue. The police, I'm saving my life, man. Right now, I'm going to tell you about a big man. Every time I remember that, I know I feel like we're just only two of them who come in and mark her and kiss them shoes every day. Because I told the man, they see me because I see somebody dead. Yeah, man, my sister made it dead, man. So them, two of them went and then come and I said, I'm both sick of door. The investigation into the abduction is ongoing, and a source close to the matter has confirmed with TVJ News that they will be questioning the security guards and searching for the other men involved. And a source close to the matter has confirmed with TVJ News that they will be questioning the security guards and searching for the other men involved. Following several operations in Oliver Garden's May Penn Clarendon, on Wednesday, January 3, detectives from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, along with personnel from the Caribbean Search Center, the K-9 Division, and the Clarendon Police, seized several guns and over 80 rounds of ammunition. Persons, said to involve brothers, were also taken into custody during a series of raids. The police said the overall seizures stemmed from the canvassing of a premises on Smith Avenue in Oliver Gardens, the home of an electrician from the parish. The initial search there yielded a 9mm pistol loaded with four rounds of ammunition. A further search was carried out, during which two additional weapons were found in the ceiling of the house. A six-hour 9mm pistol loaded with 10 rounds and a mini-gap 8mm pistol loaded with 10 rounds an empty Sig Sauer magazine and 10 8mm cartridges were also found at the premises. 
Following investigative leads, the team carried out an operation at Alexander Avenue in May Penn, where a 23-year-old suspect was seen running from a house, clutching a bag. He was apprehended, and the following weapons were reportedly found in his possession. An Intratec submachine gun with a magazine containing seven rounds of ammunition. A Colt Point .380 pistol with a magazine containing five rounds of ammunition and a plastic bottle containing 27.380 rounds of ammunition. Another premises in the area was searched and a Browning pistol with a magazine containing 11 cartridges was found. Two men were taken into custody, but their identity are being withheld pending further investigation. Andre Sutherland, popularly known as Popcorn, is said to appear before the St. Thomas Parish Court on Wednesday, January 10, after he was slapped with five charges in connection with an incident that unfolded at the third staging of Unruly Fest in the parish last month. The entertainer attended the Area 5 police headquarters, where he was served with five summons. He was charged with the use of indecent language, disorderly conduct, using abusive and calumnious language, issuing a threat to police officers, and breaches of the Noise Abatement Act. Popcon hurled insults at the police after they pulled the plug on the event shortly before 5 a.m. on December 23. Cops told entertainers who were on stage at the climax of the event that after allowing an extra hour, it was time to go. According to the authorities, Unruly Fest was slated to end at 4 a.m. <laughs>